red lights on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll call the meeting of the Green Bay Economic Development Authority to order. Uh, roll call. Sikic is here. Mr. Becker is excused. Mr. Borley. Here. Alderman Dwayne is excused. Uh, Mr. Jenrich is excused. Mr. Hilgenberg. Here. And Mr. Vogel. Here. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda from our last meeting on June 10th. So moved. Moved by Hilgenberg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vogel. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Carried. Um, oh, the approval of the agenda. Um, I'll make a, uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. We did that one. Go do the minutes. Oh, I thought we did the minutes. Okay. Okay, approval of the minute, minutes from June 10th. Um, so moved. Second. Vocal, second by Borley. All in favor say aye. Aye. Carried. Items for action, none. Items for discussion, future business park development. Wendy. Two of the subjects that we talked about in the past, and we wanted to kind of bring up again because we um, have had we, I think about two meetings ago, had had um, Dan Lindstrom present the fact that we were anticipating that the I-43 Business Park is expanding and pretty well to the point of we don't have any property available through the city. There are some parcels that are available that are private land sales. Um, and expanding the business park. We have um, two remaining properties, both of which we are dealing with right now um, proposals on. So we have interest on both, a couple of interests on one parcel and um, other interests on the other parcel. So we are looking into potentially bringing forward to the EDA about discussion about expanding the I-43 business park. Um, if you would like to have a presentation from the planning department again, because I don't know if all of the members of the board were here since we've had new members, we should probably maybe bring that back to our list and kind of revisit that. Um, Dan had some ideas of adding some properties that are over on the Mason Street, the, the Mason Street mm -hmm. thoroughfare, mm -hmm. um, and expanding it that way, mm -hmm. um, and incorporating that into maybe some professional office space and some other developments into that area. One of the parcels is owned by Walmart, um, so we would need to approach them to see if they're willing to do that. We just thought maybe that if it was city um, involvement that maybe we could get the right combination of businesses in that area to be able to complement what's already going on out there. Um, and then of course the University Heights Commerce Center is our other property um, business park that's kind of sort of a phase two but not exactly. It's got another element to it um, but to kind of just revisit looking at that um, business park and kind of our future development of that and where we go from here. We're, we're working on market strategies bringing that to market um, and looking at um, you know, a little bit sharper website design and some other things that we've kind of put together for that parcel. I showed the new website um, um, last month to the board to kind of show you kind of a little bit about some of the things we've added where we have our photos and we've kind of sharpened that up, but we wanted to talk about that. As far as the future business park development, <coughs> I, uh, talking to uh, the board here, uh, I'd be in favor of um, recommending or having a motion that planning come in here and give us a, a presentation on how to expand uh, I-43 and the best ways to do that and the issues that will be involved in doing that. So uh, um, actually I would make that motion that we uh, bring ask planning to come in and bring a presentation on expansion of I-43. Okay. All right. Second. second by Hilgenberg. I just uh, have a, can I add sure. for the purpose of discussion? When we, if, because I made a note on some, another article that came up regarding land purchases and such. And, That's correct. And, um, you know, so maybe when we, when we do that, not really necessarily just focus on I-43 part, but look at, let's have a, a picture of the city. And, you know, where's our growth patterns? Where can sure. we go? And look at that and say, all right, when you know, if we have new industry coming in, you know, where can we utilize current infrastructure 
blighted properties, you know, we don't kind have to get into great detail, but just kind of a, a, you know, let's look at 30,000 feet and look down and say, you know, this is an area that, you know, we're, we have an interest in and this is what we would like to see in this area, we'd like to see this in. How about this? <clears throat> I will expand my or modify my motion to say, uh, look at options for I-43 expansion as well as other potential industrial business park development in the area. How's that work? Favor of that? Yeah. Sounds Everybody's good. okay with that. Okay. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carrie? We are, we are seeing some momentum in the manufacturing. Um, we're getting a lot, you know, I'm getting more calls for that. We have visited a couple of businesses out in the I-43. One of them is a brand new business that has new technology that is the first in the United States. Um, so um, we have some great things going on out there. I think to build on that momentum right now would be a good sign. So. Um, <clears throat> Do you have any something specific on University Heights, or is it primarily this this that letter that we received? Yep, it's next. Okay. Can we just stay here? Uh, are we done with four? I believe so. Okay. We'll bring the planning department in with yeah. that, and yeah. we'll. It may not be exactly next time, but we'll get some information right. and start bringing that forward to this committee. Have they started, I mean, is that even on their agenda yet? Have they started looking at anything uh, on that? Or not really? I can't really answer on okay. Kim's behalf, okay. but okay. my personal thought about the planning department is that they're just restructuring. They have a new person on, and they're getting close to hiring four dance positions, so we might want to see where they are and what okay. they're able to take at a capacity on our um, request list, okay. and then I'll report back to you okay. on, on the progress is that all right with you? Okay. Should we go on to the item number five? Sure. So we, as a department, have been um, approached by a landowner out in the University Heights Commerce Center. Um, the um, business owner, or the property owner, would like to give the option to the city of Green Bay. Um, and they have spelled out their offer as follows. Um, and so we're bringing this um, item to the commission, or to the um, authority. Um, they have 17.4 acres. Um, it is along, I believe, the, um, it says it's all on frontage road. It's on Algoma Road. Um, there is one part that would be at a corner parcel. Um, but um, it adjoins the land that's owned by the city previously. Um, they've been at a couple of meetings, so I think we've met them before. Unfortunately, they cannot be here this evening. Um, but uh, they have an asking price. They are asking 100000 per acre for this property. Um, they have spelled out a proposed um, uh, plan of $300,000 down and the balance paid over the next 10 years with an interest rate of 3% if the city is interested in that. Um, this land is cited for commercial use. Um, on our University Heights business plan. And uh, the land is currently, um, the city's property is currently directly behind them. We don't have a road that accesses the city's property there, so there could be some advantages to this. But um, you know, we, we're bringing it before the committee to see if they are thinking that this is an, a good idea. So they proposed um, an email and it's here in front of you. and. If you want to take just a few minutes to review that, um, and then if you have any questions for me. their interest in coming to us, but uh, I, I just don't think the timing is right for, for us. Yep, it's for discussion today yeah. to see if, um, and then I thought that I would get back to them on kind of the committee's decision mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. How much activity is there out there right now? Anyway? I haven't had any activity in the last two months. And the heart design, that was, or what, I don't mess up the name. That was probably... Mm, gosh, it was before I started, so probably two and a half years so ago. And what did we sell that for? 
I'd have to double check because I wasn't involved in that sale. Well, our land, I was, I was just going to say, our, our land price is out there in the 20s to yeah, so so 40 to $1,000 range. Yeah. I mean, you know, and obviously we understand, I think, these individuals' feelings. It's nice, but um, one, you know, we're in the process of really looking at existing properties and looking at existing parcels within the city. Right. And then as well as, you know, working with existing uh, business partners in the parks, we currently have to expand. Plus the fact that there's 200 acres and we're, we're actually partnering with, uh, with the Madigan family that has property adjoining the cities in co-promoting that. So my you know, response in that respect would be that we will do our darndest to, to also help promote their property like we're partnering with other landowners, but to to buy it, to hold it, really doesn't make sense for the city. And quite frankly, I don't think we're in position financially to be land banking land as much as, you know, I mean, as an example, we're dealing with I-43 in this parcel because there's a need and a want and someone wants to expand there. So, and that probably adds, holds well for your statement of timing is not, no, I just don't so, see it right now. But, um, and I believe they, they've come to our meetings in the yeah, past. Is great that the people. Yeah, great people. Yeah, very nice and very friendly. Um, and I understand, um, you know, <coughs> we even tried to get uh, an issue with the driveway, but right. I think that it falls under DOT and, mm -hmm. and public works. And, you know, not that we're passing the baton, but we, we passed the baton to them. And, and yeah. until public works or DOT changes their rulings, you know, they're kind of, the hands are tied. So. Phil, any feel, uh, similar Same. feelings? Same. Or? Yeah. 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 Two yeah. issues. One is it's not the right time, yeah. and then everything else really yeah. isn't yeah. germane. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I think as far as the committee uh, is concerned, uh, again, we appreciate their interest in offering it to us, but, you know, right now we're just Okay, well, thank you for considering. Sure. One of the things I thought we could do, we're listing this property on our city's website and on our um, on our new sure. um, University Heights uh, website um, mm -hmm. in particular. Um, I've been thinking about it. It's been a while, so I was um, anticipating the fact that maybe we bring a, a business or a property owner's meeting together mm -hmm. to kind of help cross-promote each other's property, find out who's interested in selling, who's not interested mm -hmm. in selling, and then we know what is the current status of all the properties out there. So when I'm connecting businesses to it, I know exactly who to turn them over to, mm -hmm. have maybe a map with each business, you know, the property owners and their phone the contact information, make sure I have all that accurate. But I think maybe it's time to bring the business owner or the property owners together um, to make sure that we have everything accurately displayed and just freshen up everything and sharpen up our, our uh, property availability list um, for that. So um, that might be something that would be a nice fall thing. And imagine summertime is busy. There's a lot of farm families out there. Maybe shortly after that time, we could make a point of doing that before the winter months to get everybody Good. together to make sure we have everything. Because I do see some trending that this would be a great time with our billboard out there and things like that to get everybody together just, to just for a discussion. That's so that would be another opportunity that maybe this family could present their sure. um, promotion and then we can get um, a couple of other, if there are other landowners out there that would like to get together. To, it's always a strength if you can get a couple people working collaboratively than trying to do it yourself. So I'm willing to try and help with that together. Can you include that in your response back to? I will. Yeah. I think it's time. It's been a while and it's time to probably revisit that. Is that I think they had meetings initially before I started um, from time to time, mm -hmm. and it's probably overdue. But now with Julie on board and some mm -hmm. other things, it's a good time to introduce her as well. Sure. So we we'll use that as an opportunity. Item six Director's report, Director's update. Bonk is not here, Bonk but is Wendy not is. Here. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're co we're co teaming. So I'm going to be a little bit of Kevin and Wendy and Julia, but I'd like okay. to introduce our new staff um, member, Julia Uffall. She's Hi. from the Ann Arbor, Michigan area. She just joined our team this last month. Um, we're really excited to have her on. She's got a planning background along with many other things, but if she'd like to tell a little bit about herself, um, I'd like to introduce you to the board. So. Well, hi everyone. I'm really excited to be here. I've been enjoying my last month with Wendy and Kevin, and I think that I'm a part of a really great department, so I'm excited to 
kind of see what's in store. And um, I think that, you know, Green Bay is on a really great path, and I'm glad that I get to work with that. Um, my experience in planning and economic development has really sort of carved the way for me to be a part of the department and to have this position, and I'm glad to meet you all. Well, thank you. J Julie, thank you. The, the last name? Upfall. Upfall. Mm -hmm. It's U P S so A L. You, so you hail from Lower Michigan? Yep, I'm from Ann Arbor. I uh, went to undergrad in Detroit, and I went to U of M for grad school. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So now you're in Badger country and yep. Packer country. <laughs> I know, I know. So are you ready for that? She went from a lion <laughs> to a gopher to yeah. a badger. Yeah. A wolverine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Not, you know, not Minnesota. You were. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, U of M Ann Arbor, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. They, they <laughs> think it's the real U of M. Just so. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just checking. Well, we're very fortunate to have her. She's talented and educated and a great energy for us. So I think um, that'll be great. And now we have a full rounded up uh, staff between Kevin, myself, and Julia. We also have two interns this summer, which has been just a wonderful um, pleasure for me since I was kind of pulling the sleigh myself for a little bit. But um, the um, interns, we had them working on some projects. One of them is the property um, listings on our website. We are freshening that all up and rehauling that. And um, we just recently had an intern work as well on our uh, Green Bay business um, uh, resource, um, the, the funding matrix for Green Bay. So we've got some great projects that have come out of our uh, intern um, relationship and love to keep that going. And eventually we'll probably be adding that uh, fourth uh, uh, economic development person, which was talked about at council at one time. So um, we're ready to get some great things coming out of our department, which is nice when you have the strength there. Um, for our department updates, other than staffing, I wanted to kind of run through some developments that are happening in our community. So I just got off the phone with um, Brent Weicker of uh, Titletown Brewery, and he said his rooftop patio is in full swing. Um, above the tap room. Mm -hmm. The rooftop beer garden will be opening. Um, he told me knock on wood mid August, so mm -hmm. he's excited for that. He's going to do some semi ready announcements maybe early in the month, but it'll be open to the public mid August is really the aiming date, so that'll, pretty be, that'll be exciting. Uh, right below that, the Cannery Market, um, they are aiming for the first part of August. I had August 1st as a, you know, kind of roughly an outline. But you know, they want to really get it, get everything right, and they want to do it the right way. So they're kind of aiming for the first part of August as well. So the cannery market, look forward to the announcement on the opening of that. Um, I have um, included with you the um, Strategic Behavioral Health will be having their groundbreaking tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. That's an exciting development for our I 43 Business Park, rounding out some of the professional offices out there. Um, they um, hope to be open about this time next year, so that's um, a good announcement. So if anybody would like to join us, that's open to the public. And um, the um, other um, announcement that we have is the kayak launch will be going in tomorrow. That's been kind of a big project. Um, the, um, it's um, going to be putting it all into the tomorrow. On Friday at about 2.30, we're thinking of having a press um, announcement um, to feature that right before Fridays on the Fox and things, so that would be kind of nice. That was um, um, uh, another great amenity added to our downtown um, piece with that. So another thing, oh, backing up to the Tap Room and Titletown Brewery and over in that area, I wanted to let you know that Brent also wanted to share with um, the group that um, the first building has been is 100% occupied as of July, so that's a really great um, thing. So they have a lot of interest in building C and D, and are starting to put some deals together for that. So the um, development of that um, Larson Green area and things are coming together. I know that they recently met with the mayor, and things are on a pretty fast track. They feel like they have some great interest from groups and it should be a pretty exciting development time for that. So that's moving forward. I guess the DDL and Larson Green area that kind of rounds out the title town kind of tap room area is moving forward and um, they seem to be on an aggressive timeline. So that's um, the other great uh, announcement with that. Um, 
I wanted to share that the Metro um, is once again um, kind of moving forward. They had a little bit of electricity issues for some water. We're having some water management issues with that site. There's been a lot of rain and um, so they're um, organizing that. They needed some additional power and some things and so that I saw the people there working but they're going to give an update next um, week. I think it's Thursday. Which day is the RDA meet? It's the apartments. So the apartment all next week. That's 170 or 107 luxury apartments. Oh, okay. In the spot right next to my sure the challenge has been the infrastructure, the, the foundation, foundation the issues. Yeah. Well, they're going to address those issues. And uh, Nora Picor, who's the rep representative from um, Derman Properties, will be giving that update at the RDA next week. Is that Tuesday, the 14th? Mm -hmm. is it? Okay. Uh, so the RDA meeting next week. And then the other exciting announcement kind of thing that I have going on with our department is that the Shower and Schumacher building, I have a letter of intent. Um, that will be also going to the RDA next week. Um, the development group is, um, you're familiar with the Initiative 1. They're going to do an Initiative 2 across the street. Yeah. So that's going to be <coughs> the development there. And you'll see um, the... I think the architects and the builder will be doing it. It's the same architect and building team that they had on Initiative 1. So it will be um, Performa, who does a very mm -hmm. nice job. And then um, Rodak is the um, builder. So it should be um, in that um, venue. So that should be an exciting, a um, lot of great things happening kind of all over the place. And so. Um, like I said, we've had this new manufacturer run into the I-43 business park just recently. They um, purchased a property out there, and we're bringing European technology to this area. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we can get you maybe a tour out there. It would be kind of interesting to do that. So um, we'll kind of keep you on the edge of some of the things that are happening that are new developments for our community. But that's all I have for the department. Um, it's been a busy month. <laughs> Can I, um, another one. Another one. And then we have um, a couple of applications for our loan program as well. So mm -hmm. okay. I'll, I'm working through those um, apps right now. Can we touch base on the kayak launch? Yes. Which is a great <laughs> idea. And Gary brought yeah. up the question, how do we what, deal with that? What can, yeah. So great idea. I think that's fantastic that we're going to utilize and get those people down on the waterfront. Logistically, though, I have a question. Is Was the thought process or the placement of that unit. So if I am, Susie and I come wheeling down with our kayaks, we want to launch them in the river there at the launch. So we can, we take them off our vehicles, there's no place to park. So we're going to pull it there, there and then launch, or we could park up in Hagemeister, possibly the ramp, or Cherry Street, or, but I guess so, let me, Sure. Walk this through once. So if I we will. do that, then someone has to park somewhere and then get back. Yep. So, so there is, um, we know that that spot logistically and parking is a little bit challenged. And we know that that spot will probably be used more as a landing than a launch. And, a launch. and okay. so we know that that'll be kind of a destination to tie people to the restaurants and things like that. So uh, okay. um, to come in and come out at different spots is kind of the idea. Okay. Um, one of the thing that spurred that development and the reason why it's placed there is because we had a business owner that came to that area and said, I will put my business downtown, I'll put my bike and kayak business down there if I have some amenities to help kind of tie some of these pieces together. Uh -huh. It was a family-oriented business. The Children's Museum was right across the street. <coughs> they were adding snacks and ice cream treats and things. There's nothing for children in the ice cream alignment down there right now, but Creamery is going to also offer those sorts of things. But um, for the most part, it was a way to tie some of the other amenities. So if you have young children at the Children's Museum, it gives maybe some older kids kind of an idea that they can take the bikes or kayaks out and offers more amenities in that family-oriented entertainment area. So it kind of makes sense to pull that together. This business came from out of another area. It came down here and he bought the buildings. It's uh, Bill Widmer. He owns two other businesses in there recently purchased that, pro that property and rounded out that block. So he owns the House of Home Brew. He's been in, uh, you know, a champion of downtown and business development. He also owns Ned Kelly's um, bar on Washington Street. And then he purchased the rest of the properties on that um, Washington Street piece. So he's the property owner for the Euro place and 
owns all three stores. So he stories there. So he purchased that shortly after the first of the year, right around the first of the year, and has had some development. I have two businesses that are interested in going in there that I'm working with right now. Well, so right on the corner where it used to be Angelina's. And yeah. That's right. You know, that right directly yeah, across from the children's so I get your point, and that kind of makes more sense to be a landing versus a launch. So Is the door open, and I want to throw this idea out, um, with the new conference center? Two things that I that I look at, not necessarily as negatives, but sure. they may be a challenge for, for everybody. And yep. We're all on the same team here. Is that it's a net shipping channel, and it's narrow there. That that thing, and somehow we work with the, the Hampton, the, the operations of the Hampton, to do two things. One, get transient docks there for people that want to come from Door County, come to downtown Green Bay, park, stay overnight on their boat, have dinner, and leave. Not necessarily dock space, not competing with the marinas and so on, but just transient docks. And then also have that kayak launch, or maybe, there, maybe we find that we need a second one there and then people have parking you can pull up launch your kayak go up and down the river pull it back out and leave so right. I just want to throw that piece out there sure I'd like to elaborate on that so okay. there's a number of launches that are going in there's actually going to be 21 launches throughout the whole Fox River they're going in Appleton and Oshkosh and many other locations Bellevue got theirs last week Monday I think so if you go out to the Mandalay um, location. They just got their launch um, this last week um, in their spot. It's right on the East River. Oh, it's okay. um, kind of by their municipal garage area, but it's a real pretty park. It kind of butts up and it goes, there's bridges that go across. It's a real nice location there, but it has ample parking. So one thing you can put in there and then come up here, maybe have a okay. lunch and then head back. So there's the opportunity of that. We have several sites cited for the city of Green Bay. This one happened to be a priority to be able to get a business launched as well. And there's actually two other businesses gonna, that are going there. Saying, but so. we know that we would like to put one in, a, in um, eventually at the Lake Park location because there is ample parking there mm -hmm. and there is um, yeah. opportunity. You know, Donnie yeah. and Parks has mentioned that you know Bay Beach would be a fantastic opportunity mm -hmm. as well. Maybe families while they're out there, there's ample parking, there's opportunity with there. So you know, there's a couple of sites. The um, Poorly or Pier area is a site where we don't think we would need a launch because it's a soft water um, sandy landing so that you can go in. Um, so there's opportunity as well. Okay. So the Poorly or Pier is a kayak canoe launch already. It's just not ADA accessible. We'd maybe be able to get the light park ADA and accessible launch as well so that they could put in one place, go around to different locations All and be right. able to take out. But I can imagine that this I would be... I didn't realize there was going to be more. There's going to be more. Which um, is neat. And then I just talked to the gentleman from South Bay Marina today, and he's likely going to put one out there. There is going to be a moonlight kayak launch from a big group, and they um, actually put in at the Deep Pier Locks in September under the full moon, and they will come up and then take out at like South Bay Marina area. Mm, so okay. it'll be a large kayak event. So there's a lot of enthusiasts that like the silent sporter things, and you can see they're just taking off like wildfire with popularity. Um, it's kind of a low cost way to be able to tie yourself to the water, but um, it's right. uh, the East River, tr um, and then the City of Green Bay would also like to put one um, kind of off of Main Street. There's a park, there's part where the East River Trail um, is connected. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to get these two mm -hmm. trails connected. And behind there's a foods be are behind. Uh, it's behind the um, the old radiator shop and uh, yeah. What's the um, bar Strews, Strews Pharmacy. Family. Uh, kind of um, behind, I want to say there's a bar there, and it's, um, is it the Cock and Bowl or something? There's oh, something well, that, I don't, that, I don't, I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. And there's so the one trail, no, bike trail. Bad Boxles right or something, I think, yeah. is there? Yeah. Well, okay, there. Across from um, Los Benditos and kind of on that little side street is right. St. George mm -hmm. Street. There's a spot that's city-owned, and we've measured up and are kind of looking at that. So the two oh, launches, okay. Light Park and St. George, are kind of on the agenda to start our grant writing and getting ready for mm -hmm. next the next grant round from the okay. uh, DNR. So we have some things in place to get potentially those two um, spots landed next year. And then South Bay Marina is thinking of still getting theirs in this fall for the September event. So we should be able to get, there should be some really neat activity going mm -hmm. on with that. So 
So um, with regards to the the takeout area down in Pine, I'm going to make an assumption that that business owner is going to install some sort of dock racks, kayak racks that would people come racks. in. Yeah. He's putting racks. He has a permission okay. to put racks there. Um, right. There is a 10 minute unloading zone by the Children's Museum. And then by Nicolay, there's three or four spots there that have one hour parking so that they could at least have offloading and potentially get into another um, situation. But right. um, we're hoping that um, to tie some of these routes, you know, eventually be really neat to be able to tie even maybe a bus route out to like South Bend Marina where they go out to one, maybe take their bus route back to the other mm -hmm. location. You know, there's things, um, Bill Woodmer, the business owner, is also thinking about ideas where he would have the people paddle down to De Pere, take a bike, come the bike trail back to the location here, and then another group would take the bikes down and take the kayaks back. So we tie people to the trail, to the water, and kind of have that amenity kind of tied together. Well, if you can so make a dollar out of it, you'll figure it out. I'm guessing, <laughs> and I bet you people have a lot of fun along so the way. So. But don't lose the sight of, let's reverse this trend of people going here and going up to Dark County, spend a night. Let's get here. those people to come down here. So, you know, in the future, I think we should look at working with the property owner. And, I mean, it's and it's it's away from the shipping channel. Which know, spot? Oh, the uh, by the old Holiday Okay, Inn. so the Hampton, the Hampton Inn. Inn so. It's my understanding that they're going to get their feet on the ground and get up and rolling, and that's their first priority, which it should be. Yes. And ultimately, eventually, they will look at. They're on the waterfront. They mm -hmm. would like to be tied to the waterfront and have those amenities. But that's kind of as a phase two potentially, and that's, that's kind of something that. But they're aware of that. The docks that we currently had will not be going back in because they are not ADA accessible and they are not up to current standards. So we know that it'll be a phase two development with that. Um, and they've expressed that they futuristically would be interested in potentially looking at that, but that's kind of like a phase two. Right now, it's the priority is to get it up and rolling, and then they would look at other amenities to add it up at a future date, which would make sense. That's, I mean, the location alone just seems to mm -hmm. lend itself to that kind of development. Okay, that's about all I have. Great discussion today. Thank you for all of your input, and I will get back to the landowners. So, okay. if you have anything else for me, any other questions for Wendy? Or? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, moved by Borley, second, seconded by Vogel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Carrie, thanks, thanks, Wendy. Thank Good you report. very much for coming in. I appreciate that. I forgot to bring up business card. Julia, nice to meet you, Julia. Welcome. 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 Well, we'll see you more of you guys. And then, uh, what was that? Your, your yeah. Undergrad yeah. was. Yeah. 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 I went to Wayne State in Detroit. Detroit. Okay. And then I went to the University of Michigan. Thanks to you, Mike. Yeah, we do need a kind of anyway, we, uh, where was that location? In Ann Arbor. In Ann Arbor. All right. Yep. And actually, and now I'm I, happened to, I didn't get in it, but I drove <laughs> by that big city. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it's like the big house. I only, you know, I grew up in Ann Arbor. I lived there for most of my life, and I only went there for graduation. I never I never went to a football game, so. That's all right. Where you know you got to the farmer's market, though. Oh, yeah. I lived across the street. My son went to Michigan Tech. Oh, okay. And a lot of was friends from the Detroit area, oh, yeah, sure. and all that area. So we part of they became our kids. Mm -hmm. and Long story short, two weddings later. Oh, wow. So okay. we were in Ypsilanti and then we were in Ann Arbor. And we just, you know, so we attended yeah. Saturday mornings. Let's go check out this market. Oh, yeah. It's a nice farmer's market. It's very different flavor from the farmer's market here. But, uh, it is, but it's, it's different, but the same. Market. Oh, yeah. No, I I think this one's a little bit more fun. Or the one you know. Wednesday night, night, night. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Because we're trying to get some. Thanks, Wendy. Okay. Thank you again. Okay. Of course, there is okay. Thanks for looking on. He's, he was just talking to me about. Talk to Julia about this. I just said, I'm going to Is that another like, real estate database? Well, it's not. It's not. Well, yes. Did you hear okay with that? Was I talking about it? It was Luke Matthew Stone Consultant. Okay, and now Coaster. Coaster bought Consultant. They had a spin off. But when they bought Luke Matthew,
movement is the one for Excel. How would you spell Excel? I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Email. Do you have a card yet? I do, but it's my office. Oh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I can go I'll, grab it for you, but. Anyways, that's okay. I'll, I'll give this stuff the information. Mm -hmm. The guy was trying to, to see if we'd subscribe. It's currently we're paying 350 bucks a month or something like that for Coastar. Is that the red bike? Your company is? Yeah. Okay. And we use. Then we use food service, then we pay another fee to loop that. And then we pay another fee to Catalyst that powers our website for property searches. So which do you feel like you get the most value out of? I understand that like LoopNet's more member managed and Coaster's yeah, more loop, analytic. Yeah, LoopNet's like a, actual a analytics. Yeah, you know, marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Coaster is more information mm -hmm. based for sales and traffic data. They're okay. okay. I mean, none of them are that, you know, 100%. I, I haven't really looked at Excel yet, the guy in my office mm -hmm. did, and he thought it wasn't quite as accurate or up to date as mm -hmm. Lutna, or I mean, when it's close to um, Other people just use the Department of Revenue. Stuff mm -hmm. to get their and yeah. a zillion different ways right. to get the information. I mean, yeah, I, I've never, you know, I never got to use Postar because it's so expensive, but I, I've heard that it's sort of the, it's, the top it's, of the line. It's better than Excelligent right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Excelligent's growing, and, you know, so I mean, it's garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. You know, as they get more data in there, it's going to get better. I was looking at it predominantly from. Uh, on the website, mm -hmm. yeah. we're paying six or eight, I think eight hundred dollars a year to Catalyst, which is another deal to manage our web. They don't run our website; they just if we have our website linked to it for all the properties that we're working. Okay. So, are you, are you a developer? Or like a I'm a real estate developer, and uh, so I don't know. I'm not going to switch over. Mm -hmm. But what I found, what this guy showed me when he was trying to sell us was, I think it's the city of Brookfield. They manage their. I mean, it's a separate property based marketing for their for the city. You can't tell us. Excelligent. Oh, they're just behind the scenes producing it. Then you get the other stuff for free. They're so it's like their own personal, like real property information. Sort of yeah, stuff. and their stuff. Uh huh. And you can you can limit it to that, or you can have it incorporate other property within the city or uh -huh. whatever you want. With this intelligence. Yeah. See, I think that's probably more than the route that they yeah. should take. I think it's more of a. It's cheaper. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we need all of the data analytics or if we really need the marketing and promotion, which that's, you know, the loop net instead of the Coastar. Loop net is really but expensive. I'm not a real old contractor years ago. And we can have 30 primary okay. listings I'm on that, as well. that are I think you just for said anybody and everybody. Right. And after that, we're limited to only a uh, certain amount of people. When you're, when you're paying for membership? Yeah. I mean, the, so, so, um, unless, I forgot what the classification is, preferred mm -hmm. member or something like that. I mean, the general public can go in and register, right. and they can see our <laughs> list. But they can't, but they can't see the other stuff. Okay. And they can't for post us.